Today there was, uh, on our, the front page of your paper today, there was uh, an announcement that the Supreme Court uh, ruled in favor of the EPA regulations. It said the EPA regulations uh, uh, supersede uh, uh, the state of Alaska in whether or not they were allowed to have a generator. And the EPA said it was a dirty generator. I don't even know if it was a dirty generator. It may well be and may not be in production. It maybe shouldn't be. It might be for the best of that state and the surrounding people. Uh, in a free society, in a constitutional society, nobody has a right to pollute their neighbor's property. But that doesn't mean we have to wholesale endorse the notion of the EPA in Washington. It, uh, it doesn't happen. But here it was, it was saying that the EPA, uh, you know, had the, has the authority to do this and uh, keep the state of Alaska from saying anything. Under the original Constitution, those were state matters and they should have been dealt with at the state level. And there's a, uh, an agreement that we have signed with the United Nations and uh, it uh, is another one dealing with the environment and it deals with this persistent organic pollutant, they call it a, a POPs agreement. And this agreement, and we're uh, there, although the president has signed the, uh, it signed it, uh, legislation has to be passed, and they're trying to pass it this year to get uh, the, uh, to make it legal where the EPA is the only one that has to review a United Nations resolution dealing with the environment, not even to be reviewed by the Senate. So this is, uh, th this is moving along quite quickly, so, uh, and, and like I say, it's hard to get the attention of a lot of people because they, well, didn't bother me any. I don't have anything to worry about. That's up in Alaska, and, you know, and nobody's knocking on my doors. But that's why those who are vigilant about uh, one's liberty are the ones who are really the defenders and the keepers of the liberty. And it will always be a smaller number. Uh, it will never be, you know, the, the vast majority. The vast majority usually go with the vocal minority that knows what they're talking about. Unfortunately, uh, too often in this country in the last hundred years, uh, the large majority has been going with a vocal minority that didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> So uh, we, would, we would like to change that, and uh, to me, the most important thing to do to bring about positive change uh, and to alert people is to educate people and bring it, bring it to their attention. And uh, that is, is why your group, the Utah Get, Get Us Out of the United Nations group, has to receive tremendous uh, compliment for this because this, this is the vehicle. This is the way it has to be done and should be done. Whether it's getting out of the United Nations or whatever, or whether it's uh, making sure that we in the Congress obey our oaths and only go to war when the Congress declares war, whatever the issue is, it has to be through the grassroots, and the grassroots will be energized when a small nucleus of people get busy and do it. So uh, uh, this, is, this should be very encouraging, and I like, uh, I, I like what I see, that what is happening here. Uh, but the um, uh, economics and, of course, the politics and the power and the war, they're, they're always, always connected. But uh, my favorite economist, uh, and I think the greatest of the 20th century, uh, is uh, von Mises, who uh, wrote Human Action, who uh, really understood the free market. But he, uh, he spoke in Human Action about, uh, uh, about politics, and, uh, and I want to read a short uh, little statement he made dealing with, with the United Nations, and uh, I think it has a, a great deal of meaning. He says, um, it is futile to place confidence in treaties, conferences, and such bureaucratic outfits as the League of Nations and the United Nations. Plenipotentiaries, office clerks, and experts make a poor show in fighting ideologies. The spirit of conquest cannot be smothered by red tape. What is needed is a radical change in ideology and economic policies. And that is, that is so true, but it also represents so much what the founders believed. And staying out of entangling alliances, I mean, we were advised to do that, uh, to stay away from that. Can you think of a more entangling alliance than this United Nations? I mean, so, uh, you know, when, when I have difficult uh, decisions to make, they, they become less difficult 
because I say, well, what does it say in the Constitution? You read it and you usually can get some pretty good answers and they're pretty clear. There aren't too many that are difficult. And uh, it's the lack of respect for the Constitution that is such a burden. Not only do they not understand or don't respect, uh, say, the war, uh, war clause, the war powers of the Constitution. There was one time when I was on the Education Committee, I made the point that, uh, you know, quite possibly what we're doing uh, in education now by federalizing it isn't a constitutional function and uh, suggesting what they were doing was, uh, was not proper under the Constitution. And the chairman said, maybe. He says, but that's not our job. He says, that's the job of the courts. Oh. <laughs> Can you believe that? I mean, the member, the chairman of a committee, and I think he believed it. Uh, you know, like, we can do whatever we want, and we don't have responsibilities to read the Constitution. Well, what's the oath of office supposed to be about? So, uh, that's, um, it's, so you can't be surprised by what comes out of there. And, you know, another time this came up when, when we were dealing with uh, uh, campaign finance reform. Uh, you know, that wonderful piece of legislation to enhance your personal liberty. Uh, you know, when that was on the floor, our side knew it was bad. And, uh, and they knew it would probably be passed. And our administration wanted it because they said it was a political plus. Oh, yeah, we're going to be tough and we're going to clean this up. They didn't want to clean up government. They wanted to uh, blame those of you and I, the people who come to Washington, to petition their government and regulate the way you spend your money. And they said, but it's so bad that the courts will get rid of it. Lo and behold, the courts ruled 5-4 in favor of it. But there were so many of them who were willing to go along with it for political reasons, believing that our courts would protect us. goes to show you... We can't even depend on our current court system to save us from what we're doing in Washington. But after World War II, of course, we had the IMF and we had the World Bank set up. The, the IMF is the financial arm of the, go of the world government. And uh, they are still very much involved uh, and they deal in, in big, big bucks, mostly ours, and they interfere in currency markets and bailing out countries where at one time they used to prop up currencies, now they prop up economies and uh, it's a mixture of the IMF. Uh, a few years ago when we bailed out Mexico, it was a mixture of, uh, of our money as well as uh, money coming out of the IMF and international banking system. Uh, so that's around, been around a lot and very much involved and is very expensive. Now the World Bank, I see that as the welfare arm of the government, of the world government, and they get these grants and then they go over there and they build dams that aren't necessary and, and do all kinds of things that usually don't end up doing much good for anybody, but except for those special companies that might qualify for the contracts. And that's why big corporations, the big corporations who benefit by the huge contracts going through the World Bank and the shenanigans in the IMF are this very often the very same companies that are getting the contracts to both bomb countries and rebuild them. You know, uh, just think of the billions of dollars we've just spent to destroy a country and now we're going to spend billions of dollars rebuilding it and we have jobs programs over there. You know, I don't believe in jobs programs here, but if you're going to have one, let's have one here before we have one in Iraq. 